Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me. You are always most welcome. Well, continuing our little odyssey into some of these Airfix classics, aren't we? And here we have a kit which, um, I think the tooling, it's the short sky van, which is basically a, a flying bus really, more than a van I'd say, because I think it's got lots of seats in it on this version. Um, and it dates back to about 1965. So it's again, again another really old one, you know. Um, and this is actually, it's like what it says, new on it, because I think they re-boxed it at about 73, 70, 74, 74. So they're quite new, a bit, bit of a stretch, I think that. Now this is interesting because, I'll bring in a bit more. Uh, it's actually one of their Series 4 kits, so it's one of the more upmarket ones. Um, you can see the box sort of get, they get bigger and bigger with each series. On the side, it's obviously got the um, Olympic Greek Airways. It's a bit of an island hopping plane, this, for... Uh, package holiday uh, tourists, I think, really, mainly. And then you've also got the um, the Royal uh, Sultan of Oman's Air Force. Um, so obviously they were using it, I think, as a troop transporter. So it's quite a quite an interesting little uh, thing, this. Now, I haven't actually ever seen this one before. So it is truly a completely uh, brand new to me, so to speak, new, you know. <laughs> Well, let's have a look. Now, this has been very kindly loaned to us again by Paul Hunter from up in Harrogate, New Yorkshire. And now, it has got a little bit of damage on the box. Nothing too serious. It's just the flaps. They always used to go with a little bit gentle with that. It's also um, telling you on the side what the what the preferred colours are for the two variants. So that's quite helpful, actually. Now, let's have a look what we've got inside. So, um, we have... Oh, here we go. Rant alert. Let the rant begin. <laughs> you know it's coming, don't you? <laughs> Here we go again. We talked about this, didn't we, on the, the Junkers JU88, I think it was. Um, these airfix stands, uh, they always used to provide one, and of course they don't now. Why don't they? Yeah? Why don't they? I cannot understand it. Um, it always makes you laugh when people hear me say this, because so, there's one or two people that always seem to give this excuse. Well, you can buy them. I don't want to buy them separately. I don't have to think about that. I want to have a kit that should have everything inside included in the packet. Um, they used to do, as you can see. Why don't they now? And it's not like they're cheap now. They're really expensive. I mean, Airfix's still got the tools for these, so they can obviously just pump some out. And I mentioned uh, in one of my previous videos that I actually bought the packet of them. I think there's eight in a pack or maybe six. Um, but the quality wasn't very good. It was really nasty. It's just been spewed out probably in the Indian site, you know. And the quality of the clarity of the plastic wasn't as good as this. So look at this one. This is again the original, straight from the box. So this is from 1974, tooling. Well, not tooling, but the actual production. Uh, 65 till, I think, this one. But you can see it's really quite nice. It's got the, again, it's got the Airfix emblazoned there, stamped in it. Made in England, Airfix, there you go. Very, very nice. Why can't we have that? Again, I don't think we're asking very, very much. Um, I know the diorama thing, That's perhaps that's a bit more complicated, only in as much as they, when they are having to originally tool the kit, they need to have that concept included. But they don't have to do this, because they've already got the tool separately, so there's no excuse, they just can't be bothered. Anyway, rant over. We'll move on. <laughs> Let's have a look here. So we've got some decals which seem to be in a separate bag. Oh, it says, uh, sold in aid of the Mosquito Aircraft Museum. at St Albans in Hertfordshire. Now, I've been to this museum, where they took the old de Havilland plant. And I have to tell you that that is a very good museum, well worth a visit. Um, so, I, I don't know whether that's um, whether Paul did this, or whether he got the kit with this in it already, but it looks like somebody has uh, actually bought some... Uh, well, I was going to say aftermarket, but well, they don't say Airfix on them, do they? Interestingly, so maybe it is aftermarket. Um, I'd also say it's kind of after their best because they've gone a bit yellow, as you can see. Yeah, I'm not sure these are in the finest fettle, really. They probably still work, but they're just going to look a bit yellow, especially on a white aircraft. So I think you'd need to probably need to source some new ones, if we're being honest. In this era, it doesn't matter whether it's Matchbox or Airfix, you know, late 60s, early 70s, they don't last 50 years. They're not going to, are they, I suppose? It's the weakest 
link in the chain in the in the box really I think the uh, the decals so anyway it's quite a collectible thing you've got those original ones there I think so I'll put those aside and we'll have a look at something airfix usually do very well and that's the instructions now then it's time for me to have a read <laughs> oh, that's quite a lot of it as well my goodness it's printed very small mind you I might have to um you might have to excuse me a second I might need further assistance on this one. <laughs> Change of glasses to modelling glasses. There we go. Are you ready? Right, 172nd scale short skyband. Story of the short skyband light transport to date is one of reliability, ruggedness, and steady sales. Now it says to date, and they're talking up to 74. A total of 105 skyvans, both military and civil, have been sold by April 1974 to more than 50, 35, sorry, 35 operators and the type seems assured of further orders in the future. Designed to meet the needs of expanding short-range commuter market by providing short takeoff and landing performance combined with airline standard accommodation, the prototype Scarban made its first flight on the 17th of Jan 1963. Powered by two continental piston engines, a change was made to the more powerful French Asta Zoo Turbo Prop, but temperature and altitude limitations on these engines decided Schultz to re engine the Skyman with its present American 715 horsepower Garrett AI research power plant. These engines, which are much favoured by US operators, I think those are the ones on the Bronco, am I right? I think I am. Um, by US operators gave the aircraft a chance to break its high, into the highly competitive American market. Capable of single or two crew operation, the Skyvan is a purely functional aircraft, somewhat ugly in appearance with a large cabin measuring 6 foot 6 by 18 feet by 7 feet, 18 feet 7 inches, sorry, for bulky loads. And its civilian guys, up to 19 passengers and their baggage can be carried in the interior, or the interior can then be removed Skyliner and Corp, sorry, removed, giving a large cargo area for freight. This is very, very small writing, it's quite tough to follow. Olympic Airways, whose attractive markings are provided in the kit, fly two of these Skyvans on tourist services to and from the Greek islands. A development of the basic aircraft called Sky, called Skyliner Incorporates, sorry, called the Military Skyliner, Incorporates, A development of the basic aircraft called the Skylight, sorry this is a little bit strange the way they've, they've put this position here, incorporates additional passenger doors, four bladed propellers and other refinements on the aircraft. The military Skyvan 3M with its large rear cargo door and ability to carry up to 22 troops or 5,000 pounds of freight has found a ready market with the armed forces around the world including Austria, Argentina, Ghana, Singapore, Nepal and Ecuador. However, it is in the hot, barren wastes of Arabia that the Skyvan has its more punishing experiences to date, with the British-run Sultan of Oman's Air Force. In temperatures of 125 Fahrenheit, what's that, 45 C? Is it 50 degrees C? So it's thereabouts, isn't it? And it flying from short, rough, 350-yard strips, Skyvans have averaged 2,000 sorties per month more than any other aircraft in the Sultan of Oman's Air Force, carrying loads varying from coats to sheep or medical supplies or long wheel based Land Rovers. A total of 16 of these 5 tonne budgies, as the type is affectionately known, will eventually operate with the force and the markings provided are for two of these machines. It has a maximum cruising speed at 10,000 feet of 201 miles per hour, it's not bad and a range uh, with a 4,000 pound payload of 306 miles. Wow! Airfix would like to acknowledge the kind assistance of Short Brothers and Harland Limited and the commanding officer of the Sultan of Oman's Air Force and Olympic Airways during the preparation of this kit. What a good, re that's a really good background, oh, I think that's excellent. Um, and he mentions also uh, the dimensions of the height and the height length. Well, is another lesson for our friends today. I can go back to my normal glasses, I think. Now. Uh, a lesson for our friends today, uh, especially in the Far East, who don't seem to be able to produce or be bothered to produce any background. Airfix are doing this in the mid 60s and it's absolutely great, so come on. Um, so, 
we've got that, we've got on the rear, we have, well it's actually, it becomes the colour call out, so I think we'll just get straight into the slightly oddly designed <laughs> opening out sheet, be very careful of this, not doing any damage, right, here we go, I think this is going to be quite interesting, <laughs> let's have a look at this, here we go, so, your instructions then, you're going to build up pilot and co-pilot seat, do a little bit more light here, let's just have a little bit more light, there we go. Um, pilot and co-pilot seat here, uh, building up your cockpit and your, your two yokes, and the old man one, obviously we've got two different types of pilot, we've got military pilots for our man, I mean I'm not being funny but they look like jet jockeys to me, that's a bit odd, <laughs> or you've got the sort of conventional uh, civilian pilots with their peaked caps here. Um, you put their arms on, they look quite animated actually, they? these figures look quite interesting. So that's the Olympic option. Then you're going to make what looks like a, quite a complicated, well not complicated, but very intense in terms of the sheer numbers of seats you've got to make up for the passengers. <laughs> you're going to build up the seats and they're like a bench seat, aren't they? There are singles and doubles, interestingly. So it's singles to the right and doubles on the left and then like a little bit of a walkway, it's two and a one basically, you see what I mean? Anyway, tweezers, tw use tweezers to put them in, obviously it's quite fiddly. Well, that's nice and clear though isn't it, nice clear instructions, putting your seats in and then you, you can see the, the layout there that I just spoke of with a single aisle of single seats and then a, a twin seat uh, row as well. Uh, an aisle up the middle. Open up the holes for the Olympic version. Why is that then? What does that have underneath it? Something different. We'll come to that in a second I guess. So far it looks rather good I've got to say. Let's just try this sector side as well. Now then. That's where it gets a bit more complicated. So we're doing the sides of the fuselage and you are putting in... Okay the Oman, they've got different windows. The Oman one seems to have smaller windows, I think. And on the Olympic one, you're going to put in, you want you to put the decals on at this very early stage, which is kind of strange, but. And then it wants you to punch out the windows, and they provide a little bit of a, a little punch. Punch windows when transfer, or decal, is dry. So you can see that transfer was the colloquial sort of term that you people used before the decals became the more correct term, really. And they want you to punch out the actual window. How very strange. How very strange. Punch windows when transfers are dry. Now, I can see this is fraught with danger here. Um, obviously it's a, it's a one piece decal, is it? Yeah it is. Um, and you're going to have to punch them out. Now you, you, there's a real risk isn't there of these tearing and you, that's not a very neat solution. That's a very 1960s thing. I've never seen that before. Over here, you then put in, open up the holes for the Oman version. Oh, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Jumping ahead. This is this number eight. It's putting the actual windows in. So you put the windows in after you've done the day cast. Well, I wouldn't recommend that. Gordon. I think they've done a strange thing there because they couldn't be bothered. All this is about is they couldn't be bothered to cut out the holes for the windows. That's going to be fun, isn't it? <laughs> I don't think so. Anyway. Don't be too critical, it's interesting, but I think it's going to be very faffy and fiddly, this. Um, hmm. I, I guess if you've got a really... Oh, I just think it's going to be dangerous. I just think you're going to end up with those day cars getting ripped and, and feathered edges and looking really bad. But anyway, there we go. Then you're putting in your interior into the actual side of the fuselage. Looks like they're kind of interlock, which is quite good. That could be quite a positive thing. And then it says for the, open up holes for the O Man version, which I presume is going to have some sort of a, maybe some stores or something on it. Uh, so it's now a top, and you, you put in the side on, and then you put in the roof on. In effect, then you put the other side on. It's a very strange order. It's going in, I have to say. Add weight here. It doesn't tell you how much weight. I suppose we have to guess. I don't know what. I don't really understand why they can't put a figure on it, that's not very helpful, but anyway. Then we have page three. No, I'm not, not like in a tabloid newspaper, I'm afraid. <laughs> now then, 
Here we've got the nose going on, and the undercarriage right at the front. And, it, and the, no, the nose wheel is right on the nose, and it's really close to the front plane. And then we're going to build up our, our wings, basically. Um, which come with both flaps and elevators. So that, again, this is quite nice. This reminds me of the Junkers that we noticed had uh, elevators and things on it, didn't it? And ailerons. We've got ailerons here and flaps. And... Yeah, there's quite a lot of detail actually. There's quite a lot of detail. So it's... What's it trying to say here? Oh, it's showing you from two angles. That's beneath it. It's not very clear. That's above, that's beneath. Okay. Um, I mean, the diagrams are clear. It's just a little bit confusing the slight the way you're going about the presentation, I think. But anyway, it's not, I've seen worse. Uh -huh. Anyway, then you're building up your engine nacelles here. And you've got your propellers and your spinners. Um, putting those in. Obviously, this is these um, American engines that we talked about. Uh, they going on and then obviously you're going to attach those of course here to the wing you've got your main big wing struts and they are huge struts on this plane and then you've got this teensy weensy elevators that go on the back <laughs> which are yeah strangely small it has to be said the way they look almost out of proportion and then finally you're going to do your your rear end this instruction leaflet but we found a new layout a bit matchbox like if anything. And here we are, we've got the uh, the rudders that are going to go on, the vertical stabilizers and rudders. And then you've got a couple of aerials to go on the top here. Um, did we see the, um, did we see some cockpit clipper? Oh yeah, sorry I missed that. There, yeah, there's the, um, the cockpit windscreen there, part one, three, four. And then, it's, and then it's even showing you, look, in the instructions, it shows you the airfix stand. Oh, those were the days, weren't they? Isn't that fantastic? Where to put it, obviously you've got to open up the hole for that as well. And then you've just got a couple of aerials, under the, these are aerials that are under the underside of the aircraft. And then last but not least, we have got the colour cards. And we have got here... The two choices, so you've got your Olympic Airways holiday ship in conjunction with the box artwork. Or you've got the Sultan of Arban with his camouflage, desert style. Uh, it's kind of a green and brown, isn't it? I mean, well, olive drab and light brown. And there you have it. So, um, I have to say I quite like the instruction, apart from one or two small things that looked a bit confusing, overall very clear, very clear and very good. Great instructions, lots of detail about the aircraft. Yeah, um, just don't like this opening out system, it's a bit weird, I'd rather have it vertical, I think, more like an A4 style. So, let's have a look at the plastic. And here it is. Typical Airfix box. You can see in my Matchbox, many, many Matchbox videos I've done, when I complain about the 70s Airfix presentation of the box. Not the box art, which was usually brilliant with Roy Cross, another Roy. Uh, nothing wrong with that, it was just the rest of the box that was let it down rather badly. You see what I mean here. It's just a box. There's no added value in it, there's no added information on it. It's just the basic crude bit of cardboard box really, which is kind of, yes, it's adequate, but Matchbox came out and with their razzmatazz boxes, with paint guides on it, parts, small parts, painting guides, colour call-outs, adverts for their other products, etc, etc. So it was just a lot more glamorous, really. Certainly visually, much more stimulating. And then you had the Royal Oxley Hardware. Now then, should I open it? I think the instructions are that that's okay. Um, it's not going to be a, a, a wings, it's going to shoot up to £300 in value, I don't think so. Anyway. I don't know, because he'll sue me. <laughs> Let's get the, the wraith sword out and give it a cut very gently. Do it as gently as we can. He says. There we go. This is only one bag, so it's not quite as critical, is it? Different parts off the sprue. Now then, let's bring you in. You can have a good old nosy at this. First of all, these windows we talked about, uh, which look a bit infamous, and I have to tell you, 
but they're not that great. <laughs> They've got like bullseyes right in the middle in terms of a sink mark. Can you see that? Yeah, they got like sink mark right in the centre. Don't think that's intended. They've all got it as well. Look, <laughs> and this is where you know again my complaints about Airfix uh, that the moulding wasn't always that brilliant. Uh, I mean, it's nice and crisp and bright, but optically it's not not too nice either. See if I can get this into better focus for you. And there's a lot of sort of crazing. Can you see that? It's a bit uh, a bit rudimentary I think is probably the best expression to use. But it's okay I suppose for its time and everything. Joining the Airfix Modelers Club? Oh okay. And now we have the thing I do get you know I get onto Airfix and I get a bit uh, grumpy and a bit down about it because the sprues that they had, uh, again compared to the matchbox that I was very uh, happy with, you know we get this very sort of wobbly sprue without a proper frame around it and this is why things wobble around, they fall off, you know. This is 1974, this is a year after matchbox came on the market so there's kind of no excuse Although they did originally till it in 65, granted, um, and, and I, I think it shows. I think I suppose there is an excuse, you know, given the due. It's very flashy. Uh, I mean, I've seen worse. It's, I don't think it's quite as bad as the, uh, the Yonkers was. But it's a bit... yeah. There's quite a few sink marks here and there as well appearing. Um, but the surface detail's nice. Just give, give credit where it's due, not be too negative. Look at the surface detail, we've got raised rivets here that have done very, very nicely. Those are really rather super. Feels really good, that's nice. And you've got these raised um, sort of fins built into the, uh, the rudders there. Uh, like fluted effect. Um, it's not too bad, it's not too bad. Then we're going to get into, oh in fact it's, oh hang on a second. No, there's there's a problem. <laughs> the problem is I've just seen the date. It's got the date stamped on it, and it's actually got look. They must have retailed it because it says 1975. Now then, I'm going to sound like a bit of a negative moaning mini now, but you know, being fair about it, 1975. That this is not really the standard that that was appropriate for the day. 1965, yeah, okay. 1975, no, it's not so good, is it? Um, anyway, we'll, we'll, you know, let's, let's plough on and look at the parts. Because it's an interesting aeroplane, that's for sure. Let's have a look at what we've actually got then. Again, it's got this strange leaves, you know, there's no thought gone into this sprue design whatsoever in terms of the way they put it together, is there? I mean, look at this. Uh, it's quite poor, really. But the part moulding isn't so bad. Let's have a look at this now. So you've got the, uh, is that the roof or is it the floor? It's the roof. This is the roof here. The top of the plane. And actually the detail is very, very good. Now this is why people like Airfix. You know, there's a generation of people who say to me, Airfix were more detailed and they didn't have these huge trenchy panel lines and the, the, you know, the finesse was greater. And they're kind of right, you know. I, I can see where they're coming from. You can see it here. Look at this. On the side panel, there's some really sharp detail there. <coughs> Excuse me. See that? You've got these raised rivets all over the place. They've actually moulded that rather well, in all fairness. And again, the um, panel sections on this roof, that's been done well as well. It's good, it's very good. And you've got these uh, parts of the, I think it's the uh, Ailerons. Yeah. Uh, you start the ailerons. Um, props don't look too special, but there we go. Cut of everything. And then we've got another sprue with these other parts of the wing. Again, it's a bit flushy. You can see here. There's quite a few areas where you've got flash appearing, but the but the fine detail is there. You've got some really good panel detail. It does represent the the finer surface details much better than a matchbox uh, and this is the difference isn't it I guess you 
couldn't win because you, you either got a matchbox kit which went to went together like a dream which gave you a real buzz when you bought it and then as you're coming toward the end of it you're probably thinking it's not got the detail I would hoped um, the panel lines are a bit wide like a ploughed field you might say a bit trench like on these it's the opposite uh, these have got beautiful fine detail but they're a battle to get them to go together um, now I haven't made this particular one so I'm, I'm kind of generalising here but yeah you know uh, <laughs> oh one just fell off I didn't do that it literally just fell off its own cord <laughs> that's the seat sorry Paul that's one of the seats let's have a look at that in a bit more detail many many of these dual couch seats oh, he's dropped it Doing very well am I dual couch seat design which is pretty small as you can see um, lots of those, be careful, no more drop off. Quite a lot of small parts. And then we've got <coughs> some of the interior details and we've got all these flaps as well. There is flaps here and again this theme is repeated where we've got lovely lovely detail on these. Rivet, rivets are very fine, excellent accurate riveting uh, detail on the uh, in both the, the inner hold and here on the floor outside the underside. Quite nice. And you've got you've even got two spinners here which must admit look rather well done. Look at this. That's a lot better than the previous kit we saw from Airfix from this era, wasn't it? That had the very flashy I mean there is a bit of flash on them there. But not not like the one we saw last week. The Yonkers 88, because that was really bad. So that's quite decent. We've got another loose part here, we've got Mr Pilot. Can we get him in the frame? See they always do these kits in white as well, which is the worst colour to try and show you anything. The camera hates it, it doesn't pick up well on white. Oh there we go, we've got it. Not too bad. Actually to be honest, the, the figure is quite nice. He's actually quite a decent figure. Let's get him in that frame a bit better. Struggling with our lens. Come on, you can. Yeah, it's actually quite a, quite a nicely detailed figure. That is. Yeah, I won't persevere with that too long. Um, and then you've got your sky van, the side panels, and again we've got some lovely detail on these side panels. Look at the raised rivets here. So the the, the fine stuff. Uh, you can argue that Airfix are getting the. Uh, I said this once before, actually. They're getting the really difficult stuff excellent and the really simple stuff they're making a complete mess of it. And this is, I say, you know, Matchbox were doing the, uh, the simple stuff really, really well. And the complicated things, the fine detail, they didn't focus on that quite so much. Um, I noticed that you've got your Omani military pilots here. They look like they're about to go off in a jet fighter, to be honest. <laughs> Let's have a look at these two. Can you see that? They're quite detailed, you know, quite why they wear that sort of garb for a flight in the sky van. It's like a pleasure flight, really. A bit of island hopping or whatever. Uh, but these guys obviously are on the manoeuvres in the desert. So you've got that sprue and you've got the exact opposite. It's so pretty much a duplication on this side, which is the, the port side. And again, you've got lots of lovely detail, you know. Look at those rivets. The riveting is fantastic. It's really fine. So much super super detail. It's good. It's very good. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure what to make of it. Um. Got one or two bits again. That's off the sprue. It's the uh, nacelle for the engine intake. <sighs> I feel a bit torn because on, on one level it's way better than I expected, and on another level it's worse than I expected. I think. I think in the interest of balance, I should probably give it an 8. Again, <laughs> it seems to be coming out of state. Um, the windows are very poor. I think that the, I'm not sure what the fit's like, so I'm not trying to build it, but <sighs> there's a lot of cleanup going to be needed on quite a few of the parts. Not all of them, not all of them, but quite a few are going to need cleaning up big time. 
Um, but we have seen worse, so it's slightly better in some respects, but I'm just su surprised it's a 75. So this is the same tranche of kits as the MRCA, what became the Tornado, the Multirol Combat Aircraft. Um, that was about the same 5, 74, 75. Uh, and in a same size box series four like this. So I think that was slightly better than this in fairness. Um, but it's quite a nice kit and it's got it's got some things going for it, you know, the detail, you know, I can see there the, the sort of what's the main entry door, it's really good, you know. It's very fine, very realistic and scale like. So I think eight out of ten is probably fair. I hope you agree. I hope you'll give me ten out of ten with a thumbs up and uh, at least maximum score you can. Um, I hope you find it interesting. It's certainly nice to see these uh, these earlier kits. Um, not one I've seen before, but to be honest. I think with a bit of effort that'll make up into a really nice kit. I just I just wish it was cleaner. I wish that the clear parts were a bit better. I think they let the side down just a little bit because they are got bullseyes in the middle sink mark. And that shouldn't be there, you know, that's just not right. It's just bad manufacturing, I'm afraid. So it loses a point for that. It loses a point for the flash. And that's how you get to eight. I mean, the instru instructions are great. You've got a stand. So I think eight is fine. I think it's fair. That's where I'm at. So thank you very much for joining us. I know that a lot of you keep looking over my shoulder. You, you know, admit it, you are. Uh, behind me, there's a few even more interesting things coming up in the not too distant future. And we're going to be talking about supersonic jets and behemoth jets, the biggest jets you've ever seen. The fastest and the biggest airlines ever are coming very very soon so stay tuned in the meantime thank you very much for watching don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and dig the notification bell if you haven't done that yet and i look forward to delivering you more progressively more exciting and interesting kits and entertainment in the very near future in the meantime thanks a lot take care of yourselves and bye for now